When most people think of real estate ventures in New York City, successful projects in Manhattan like Billionaire's Row come to mind. But it's far from the most ambitious project the Empire State City has to offer. Hudson Yards is an impressive 11 hectare neighborhood with 17 million square feet of buildings atop two platforms suspended over an active rail yard serving America's busiest train station and it boggles the mind. With an estimated construction cost of $25 billion, no one could imagine the state of the Hudson Yards venture in 2022. Nine years after groundbreaking was done on the Hudson Yards project, its developers have only been able to complete its western half. Seeing the tremendous amount of time and money spent on the project, the question on most people's lips is why Hudson Yards is only half completed where did it go wrong? Hudson Yards is the largest private development project in US history, and it's being built without footings or foundations. Instead, the project is going to sit atop 300 concrete sleeve steel caissons. Two North American real estate companies, Related Companies and Oxford Properties, are the primary developers and major equity partners. Related Oxford and other large investors have funded Hudson Yards construction from several capital sources. For undertaking of its size, most people would expect delays, but so far half this ambitious project has almost been abandoned. To really understand why a project as massive as this still hasn't been completed, we have to look back at the history of the location, which is now Hudson Yards. The site that would become Hudson Yards is located between the neighborhood of Chelsea and Hell's Kitchen on the western side of Midtown. Originally a simple rail yard, proposals to build other structures on it can be traced back to 1956 when William Zeckendorf, an American real estate developer, suggested the construction of the Freedom Tower. Zeckendorf planned to build a 533-meter tower that would take the crown as the tallest building in the world at that time. His plan never came to fruition, but several other proposals were suggested for the rail yard. In the 1980s, the Jets and the Yankees both proposed new stadiums above the rail yard, but they both fell through. The most entertaining proposal for the space came in the form of an Olympic stadium for the New York Olympics. With New York's 2012 Olympics bid, the plan was for all boroughs to participate by hosting different sports and the main attraction being the West Side Stadium. It goes without saying that the plan fell through, with the Olympics going to London. With the Olympics deal off the table, the next venture proposed was a mixed-use residential and commercial district that seemed like the perfect plan for the space. The site was immediately divided into two portions, the Eastern Yard and the Western Yard. Today, the Eastern Yard has eight buildings spanning from 30th to 34th Street and from 10th to 11th Avenue. Groundbreaking for 10 Hudson Yards, which was not built on the rail platform, occurred on the 12th of December 2012. Construction on most buildings in the Eastern Yard was finished early. By 2013, tenants for 10 Hudson Yards were announced, and it included established brands like L'Oreal, Coach and Sap. Now, one building that stands out of the eight buildings in the Eastern Yards is Tower D, located at 15 Hudson Yards and connected to The Shed, a performing arts center. Tower D is home to some of the highest-end condos Manhattan has to offer. Another building on the eastern side is 30 Hudson Yards, completed in 2019. 30 Hudson Yards is known for its impressive new futuristic architectural style. Being 400 meters tall, 30 Hudson Yards is the sixth tallest building in New York City, and it's also home to the world's highest outdoor observation deck called The Edge. The other towers, 35, 50 and 55 Hudson Yards, are also cutting-edge office and retail spaces. Apart from the ultra-expensive condos and office space, the Eastern Yard also has a seven-story mall with over 90 shops and 20 restaurants. This space covers 93,000 square meters of space called the Shops and Restaurants at Hudson Yards. Taking things outdoors, there's a 2.4 hectare public space called the Plaza. The Plaza was designed with world-class events and exhibitions in mind. Situated in the heart of the plaza is a unique looking piece of architecture called the Vessel. The Vessel serves as a public art display and tourist attraction, but it was closed in July 2021 when several people jumped off the structure. So far, we've mainly talked about the flashy parts of Hudson Yards, but you need to stick around to the end of the video for the real gritty story about New York's latest district. As it stands, Hudson Yards is the newest district in New York City with some of the country's most expensive real estate. It's unmissable with its futuristic skyscrapers in West Manhattan. The media has crowned the project the largest mixed-use private real estate venture in American history. Since opening its doors to tenants, Hudson Yards has attracted the attention of companies and individuals due to its lavish spaces and tech-savvy design. 
While the eastern part of Hudson Yards might look perfect, it has one major issue – rent. It isn't just the newest district in New York City, it's also the most expensive, with prices of apartments and offices being way higher than the average for other locations in Manhattan. The eastern part of Hudson Yards may be impressive, but the ambition aspects of building the real estate adventure come from the western part. Unlike some of the eastern yard, which was not built on the rail platform, the western part of Hudson Yards is to be built entirely on the platform. This means that the developers would have to build the land which would hold the buildings, which adds a level of complexity not seen with regular projects. The western part of Hudson Yards will be home to office and residential skyscrapers, schools, parks, hospitals and more. The general theme for the western part of the yard is to provide affordable housing, unlike the condos and office spaces available in the eastern yard. Years after the towers, like 30 Hudson Yards and 10 Hudson Yards were completed, the western yards still remain as barren as ever. The exact details of what is to be built still haven't been released and construction on the western yards has been repeatedly delayed due to financing issues. The main problem stems from the fact that the 4 hectare rail platform needs to be made over the rail yard to hold the building. Building an elevated platform over an active train yard requires a clockwork schedule. The developers have conveniently not been able to get financing to build the set aside for housing at substantially lower prices than units typically rent or sell. Unlike the Eastern Yard which got developed relatively quickly, developers aren't incentivized to build the Western Yard. And it looks like it may take a while before residents begin to see some development on that side of Hudson Yards. Even if the developers somehow get financing for the project, there's also the problem of building the platform itself. Now, all the work must be done in conjunction with the Long Island Railroad to ensure the trains can continue their regular operation. This translates into strict working hours so as not to interrupt the trains moving in and out of the yard. Workers will only have an hour or two to mobilize rigs weighing hundreds of tons into position, drill caissons into place and remove all the equipment before the trains pass through. As if that weren't hard enough, the job requires an incredible degree of precision. This project is actually two platforms supported by 300 caissons ranging from 1 to 2 meters in diameter. The platforms, incorporating 23,000 tons of steel and weighing more than 32,000 tons, will support over 650,000 meters of apartment, office and retail space. The platforms bridge over 30 active Long Island Railroad tracks, three subsurface rail tunnels utilized by Amtrak, New Jersey Transit and the concurrently constructed Amtrak tunnel encasement. These railroad facilities are used by about 700,000 commuters daily. Additionally, all the utilities to service the 7 million square feet of offices, stores and residents must be provided through the platforms, making it extremely difficult.